And as I'm sitting in there, some kids come and open the fucking paddy wagon and try and get me out. They're like, get out, Jack, quick. And I'm like, guys, guys, thanks for the support, but <laughs> let's let's just close the doors, all right? Guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Luke on 23 We're doing talking shit today. We've got a very special guest. He's weighing in at 100 kilos from Sydney, Australia. This guy's gone missing more times than I don't know where that was going. But guys, we got Jack Dowd on the fucking channel. He's a YouTuber. He's a professional scooter rider. Thanks for coming on, my bro. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Bro, we've this got Jack. Sick. Jack, man. Is this your first ever podcast? Yeah, it is. It is. Fuck yes. This should get some views, man. Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, bro, how you been? What's been going on? Uh, I just started making vids again. Yeah, that's good. Just the past couple of weeks, so just been um, focusing on that, really. Yeah, how are yeah. you finding it? Yeah, it's good, it's good. Feels like a bit different now, but I'm sort of just like experimenting with like videos and just like... Can't you make me laugh, Jack? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm just... I just thought about you going missing, like being on missing persons unit. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. <laughs> just see me on like a poster in the street or something. <laughs> Bro, sorry for cutting you off. All right, so you're coming back with the videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and your first video back? Yep. Fucking number 15 trending on YouTube. Yeah, I was pretty surprised. You've got a you've got a very core cool fan base. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like even through like not uploading for years, they like stick around. And yeah. Still watch and wait, which is pretty crazy. What's your inbox like? Like what? Like so, Jack Doubt's inbox, man. Are these cunts abusing you to like? post videos for the past three years uh well it was sort of like that but then it just became like i don't know eventually it was like just make a vid when you're ready and stuff like yeah they seem to sort of i don't know the people like the viewers know i feel like sort of what's going on i feel like you sound like mr <laughs> beast man <laughs> It sounds like we've been watching Mr. Beast podcast and you sound like... Nah, the Has viewers, he got a podcast? No, nah, he was on a podcast. Oh, which one? Fucking something. It was in, oh, Joe Rogan. Oh, he went on there. Bro, it was proper inspiring. I haven't seen that. you got to watch that one, 100%. That. But um, so you, you've come back. Yeah. Now, we all want to know, like, let's take it way back. Way back. Like, jacked out as a, as a kid. Yeah. I don't know if you got too many stories as a kid, but like, where are you from? Well, I was what born in you? Melbourne. Were you? Yeah. Fuck, I didn't know that. Yeah, born in Melbourne. And then my family moved to Sydney when I was two. Like, I don't remember anything from Melbourne. And um, yeah, like earliest memories of life. I don't know, probably like getting a skateboard and stuff, to be honest. That's like. How old were you when you get in skate a skateboard? I was four. Four. Yeah, and I really wanted to get a skateboard. I don't know why. I don't know where I saw skateboarding or anything, but... Straight I on. Like, yeah. I think kids do get skateboards. Yeah. Like skateboards, scooters, BMXs, like their yeah. parents chuck them on the training wheels and have a little ride around. Yeah, yeah. Like I really wanted one. My mum was like, you got to wait till you're five. But then my dad and I just went off and got one. Is your dad a badass? Oh, Good guy. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's let's like find out. Let's find out. So like you you're born in Melbourne. <laughs> Fucking Jack, you're a funny guy, bro. <laughs> okay, so you're born in Melbourne. Yeah. You moved to Sydney. What are your parents doing? Uh, well, we moved to Sydney because my dad got a um the he uh, got a job the concert master of the Sydney Symphony Orchestra. <laughs> It was a big deal. So we came what? to Sydney. What did he do? He, he plays the violin. <laughs> fucking what? Okay, man. You're too much, like Jack. Music. You fucking cracked me up, bro. So, guys, guys, we're going to get into this, all right? This guy's just a funny character, man. First podcast, guys. Yeah. First podcast. You're doing good, bro. Thanks, man. So you've moved to Sydney. Yeah. Because your dad's playing violin. Yeah. For the Sydney Orchestra. Sydney Symphony Orchestra, yeah. Okay. The opera house. <laughs> this guy's a big deal. It sounds like. Yeah, I mean, in the in the <laughs> in the in that world, yeah, like the I don't know, like the the orchestra <laughs> world, <laughs> like I I was never really interested as a kid because, like, I don't know, I was just just trying to do like you know, just young and not that interested in like really 
what your parents are doing and stuff. Like, yeah, gotcha. I just wanted to be at the skate park skating 24-7, so. Yeah, gotcha. What was your mum doing? Um, well, my mum also played the violin. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was in like... Oh, um, well, no, I'm red, guys. Sorry, sorry, Jack, and, for um, cutting you off. I'm boiling up right yeah, now. When, this when, when we moved to Sydney, yeah, she was just um, just looking after us kids at home. Yeah. I had an older brother as well, and then my younger brother came along. Where's your older brother? Uh, well, he lives in Sydney. Yeah? Yeah. You close with him? Uh, yeah, of course. What's he do? He also plays the violin. <laughs> <laughs> he does, dude. Dude, you've got a whole bunch of... Vi- your whole family's playing violin. Yeah. I didn't go for the violin. I went for the cello. Cause, like, I was, so like, you were actually doing the music stuff too? Yeah. At school, like I had to do it through school. So I was in like an orchestra at school and shit. Okay, when did you... So up until what age are you fucking jamming out on these violins? Oh, well, the piano came first. Yeah. I started playing the piano in like like kindergarten or something. Yeah. Um, until I was like 12. Yeah. And then I st- like just stopped all the music. It was more of like a thing that my parents wanted me to do. Yeah. Play the piano and yeah, do music stuff. I mean, they weren't really too fast, but it was just like... All us kids had to play an instrument at some point, so... Yeah. Yeah, but I was never, like, that interested in it. Yeah. I just wanted to skate. So when did you, like... Like, what brought you the courage of... So when you're 12, mm. you, you're probably transitioning into high school at that point? Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, like, year seven, something. You just went, fuck this, like, you told your mum and dad, I'm done with the violin. Uh, yeah, just, like... Stopped going to lessons and stuff. Yeah. And then I was done. I mean, like, I skated that whole time. Up until I was, like, 11, 12 is when I got into scootering. When I yeah. quit skating. Mate, you, you've you really, like, pushing this skateboarding and scootering. Like, this is wh- is that where your life started, really? Pretty much. It's, like, my earliest memories of, like, life was going to buy that first skateboard. Really? Yeah, I remember it, like, so clearly. Like, getting the ferry from Circular Key to Manly. Went to Manly Blades which is now Skater HQ. We spoke to that guy the other... Oh, really? Not too long ago. We went oh, and had true. a chat to him about um, electric scooters. Who, Bill? Yeah, Bill. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Were you... So you said from Circular Key. So are you living in Sydney CBD at this point? No, no, no. I was living in um in Kalara. Kalara, okay. Yeah. And then you go on a Manly. You're buying your skateboard and scooters. Get a skateboard. Was it's it just like normal stuff, school. Yeah. Just, I don't know, school activities. And then, so so primary school was just primary school. Yeah, it was pretty High school, you, you start finding yourself riding scooters and skateboards. Yeah, yeah. Made the switch from skating to scootering. When was that? Uh, when I was like 11, 10, yeah. 11. And yeah. you still, you, you're very talented at a few things. Like you're, for some, do you surf? No, I bodyboard. Bodyboard, and you're good at that. Oh, I just do it for fun sometimes, yeah. What about ping pong? You good at ping pong? I like ping pong, yeah. We've versed him. We've actually versed a few times in ping pong. Yeah, we've had a few pretty crazy games. Okay, so I'm pr- I'm getting <laughs> your vibe that your story starts. Well, it starts. I don't know. Like, yeah, it was just school, whatever. Like, um, yeah, like. I'm just trying to understand. Like, it's like so for people want like for kids wanting to. Um, go from, you know, primary school, high school. Yeah. And and if they want to become a YouTuber or jacked out, like, how was it for you? Well, the YouTube came, like, way later. Like, the YouTube is, like, a product of, like, everything that came before that. Like, I, I didn't even know, like, about YouTube. I, was, I wasn't thinking about YouTube at all. I was posting videos from, like, a super young age. Yeah. But it was just, like, a skate edit that I'd film on my street or, like, yeah. you know, just some, some like, home video. Yeah. I'd chuck it on YouTube, but um, the YouTube came like much later. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going from, so high school, was that hard? Um, like leading, like leading up to high school, I was just like pretty, I don't know, like average student, whatever. Like I was never missing school. I was getting the work done, whatever. I wasn't too interested, but I was getting it done, I guess. Yeah. And then, um, in it was like year seven where i was just like 
I was just like, fuck this. I just want to get out of here as soon as I can and just like do what I want to do. Mate, year seven is the first grade of high school. I know. And I said, fuck this. <laughs> you just said you were doing all right in the in, yeah, I was in doing high good. school. I was doing, yeah, I don't know. Like something like changed. Like I was like, I don't know. I was chilling up until like year seven. And then I don't know, like. Did you get bullied? No, nah, no. Nah, school was chill. What'd you do through school? Um... Well, after high school started, like, I was just skipping school all the time, like, never really did any work. Like, I just, I just, like... I, Mate, I you it. just said that you were doing good in high school. No, 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 up until high school. Like, oh, you were doing good. As soon good. as high school started, like, I remember the, the um, the, uh, like, the the day that you go, like, before high school, like, the, uh, what do you call orientation. it? Orientation. Like, yeah, orientation day. I was just, like, sitting there just, like, nah, I don't like this. At that point, you're just saying, fuck this, I don't like it. Yeah, never liked school, ever. What What are the reasons behind it? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I like learning. Like, it's, I, 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 I don't know, just getting up early to put something on I don't want to wear, to go somewhere to, like, just learn shit that, I guess, I don't know, I didn't find important or interesting. Like, I feel like I've always known what, like, I've wanted to do and, like, I'm not like saying fuck school or anything, but like no, that's 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 all right. I, we know that, but like, I, I, I wasn't doing any of the work anyway. Like, I was just like, just wait until the bell rang, pretty much. What was your like? How like a twelve year old with that mindset? Mm. Like, you must have been thinking, "Fuck this! I want to become something bigger." Yeah, I didn't really know what to think at the time, as far as like my future went, like. I just knew I didn't like school. Yeah, I just didn't like school. Like yeah. it wasn't like horrible. Like it wasn't like some traumatic experience. I just didn't want to like go there every day. Yeah. I, ju I just saw it as like, oh, I only get two days a week to do what I love. And I was just like, that's just not enough. And that was skateboarding. Uh, yeah, well, it was skateboarding up until like pretty much year seven, like that year. Like when I started, it was like when I found Scooter and I was just like, yeah, this is all I want to do. But yeah. leading up till then, it was like skateboarding, skateboarding, skateboarding. That was like all I wanted to do. Actually, yeah, that, that's what I wanted to pursue. I just wanted to be like a professional skateboarder. And so I was just skating all the time, filming edits with friends and like every chance I got, I'd just skate. And who was inspiring you to, like who were you watching? Were you watching anyone? Um, so I don't even think YouTube was like around when I was like super young skating. So I'd just get like magazines and like, like a... I don't know, some like Tony Hawk DVD or something. Tony Hawk was a fucking boss, eh? Yeah, Tony and Rodney Mullen. Oh, Rodney Mullen. I remember, I remember my dad like showed me YouTube. I remember like he like, he's like, yeah, there's this website and you can go on it and you can just like search something up and like, and I just searched up skateboarding and then I found Rodney Mullen. Wow. And he's like doing handstands and shit. So I'm like <laughs> running outside trying to like flip my board around and like, yeah, I was just inspired to like skate. So Rodney Mullen's your favorite skateboarder? Uh, it, he's definitely up there, at least back then, especially, yeah, it was like skating that I'd never seen before, so. Yeah. Did you play any Tony Hawks, the, the, um, Tony Hawks pro skaters? Did you get around any of them? No, I've like pretty much like never, ever played a video game in my whole life. Like ever. I never had video. Like I just wanted to be outside. Like I was just like an outside, just, you know, skating, playing on the street. Like the street I grew up on, like played a big part in like. I don't know, I guess who I am. Like all the kids on the street would just, just play in the street all day after yeah. school, before school. So it was like just super active. Like most of my friends were like not in school. They were like on my street or something. Like, yeah. So so you, you, the street you lived in was like, what, all the parents knew each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, it was like the place to be. Like we'd spend all our weekends just on the street. Like, what about Christmas? Was there Christmas dinners at one person's house? Like that close of a street? Oh, there were definitely dinners. I don't know about Christmas dinners, but yeah, like we're <laughs> so all, all the streets going to a dinner. Yeah, like the whole street, like every single house. Like, are you not fucking? Like are you taking the piss or are you being no, I'm serious? I'm being serious. Like, that's pretty good for like a culture. Like, it was such a good like community. It was so fun and like the street. It was just like a long, mellow road. So it was just like skateboards, bikes, ripsticks, rollerblades, building jumps. You know, just and a safe street. Yeah, safe, quiet street. Which you don't get that in Australia too much. You don't get um, safe, yeah. 
I don't think like there's like yeah, that that busy. story kind of reminds me of my aunties like where the whole street kind of you know they know each other and stuff like that but it's good that um the parents were getting the kids out and all playing and socializing oh, absolutely yeah like my parents were pretty strict on like always just being outside and like yeah video games I can never play like still to this day so your parents are telling you like back in the day get outside yeah and now it's just gotten worse with kids with um, iPads and shit like that where all the kids these days, they're just inside and they're not out socialising. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like, I didn't even really have, like, a phone until I was, like, 13, 14. Yeah. Like, there were no iPads or anything. Or were there? I don't know. When did iPads come out? Oh, iPads were know. fucking... I remember the iP- the. Do you remember the iPod video where, like... um. You could download it, like you got a video in class or something. Do you remember them? I don't remember that. iPod shuffles and shit? Oh, yeah, iPod shuffles, yeah. iPod shuffles. Yeah, I, think, you, I, th- I, th- I think I had one of those. Yeah. If you, if you stole an iPod video at school, that was the best. So say everyone was playing sport and shit. Yeah. And then you go and like everyone leaves their bags. Yeah, If yeah. you're scoring an iPod video, you've hit the jackpot. True, true. iPod shuffle was worth about 40, 40 bucks. iPod video, 300. Damn. So, yeah, we'll kind of raid and cunts bags at school, but we won't go into that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you've come for this, from this fucking nice, good street. Mm. Um, did you, have you, tra- have you tra- were you travelling much when you were younger? Like, did your parents take you on holidays and stuff? Um, yeah, we'd go on some holidays, like, um, to, I remember we, like, went to the Gold Coast when I was super young. Um Usually, like, we'd go up to the south coast, like... Yeah. Um, in the summer. And that's that where like you got your bodyboarding? Yeah, 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 yeah. All my cousins would be there and stuff, so, like, that was a fun getaway. Yeah. In the summer. But, um... Yeah, not not a whole lot of travelling. Let's get into, like... Oh, I'm not too sure if you want to share this, but where's your dad now? Uh, he lives in Germany. Yeah, so... Yeah, so he moved there in, um... In, like, 2014. So, like, my parents split up when I was um, 10. Yeah. So and then I was, like, going back and forth between my mum and dad's place. Yeah. And then I guess at some point, like, I just wanted to live with my dad, like, permanently. My brother stayed with my mum. Then I was living with him for, like, a couple of years. And then he moved overseas and, like, yeah, I was... How would you deal with that breakup? Um, like, your parents splitting... Oh, um, I mean, I guess it was like pretty hard at the time, but I don't know. I just kind of like accepted it and it was just like, it is how, like, it is what it is. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was like, it was different. It was like pretty, like, it was, it was all of a sudden, like, you know. Was your dad cheating? Nah. What happened? They just grew, grew yeah, apart. Yeah, just, just, yeah, grew apart and. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, just. How'd you, um, so like when you say you went to your, to live with your dad full time, mm. were you just going like, fucking oaf, I want to, like, like what, what was mum strict and dad was more playing uh, the violin cruising around or? Yeah, mu- well, 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 like, don't get me wrong. My dad like wasn't like not strict. It's not like he like just didn't give a fuck what I was doing, but it was just more like sort of more chill I don't know, lifestyle that yeah. I like better than, I don't know. Yeah, I just, I just really liked being with my dad. Like, Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Do you go visit him now? Uh, well, no, like I was about to go in 2019 and then that sort of fell through and then all the COVID shit happened. So yeah, like I'd like to get over there this year. What's he do now? Um, so he, um, he's, Still plays the violin, just like <laughs> gets like gigs here and there. <laughs> but like, yeah, for the most part, I don't know. He's just living, chilling in Germany. You know? Yeah, that's sick. That's good. Yeah. Hopefully, you get to catch up with him soon. Yeah, yeah. I'm really hoping this year. If not, definitely next year. Yeah. Or maybe he'll come here. Like he he has visited a few times. So. Yeah. 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 So we got the maybe the mic a little bit closer. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um. So so we got the foundation of. You sh- you're, you've grown up in a nice, cosy street. Mm-hmm. The parents are there. 
Yep. They've built Jack Dowd up. Mm-hmm. You're coming up to... Let's get straight into this scooter shit, man. All right. Like, big part of your life for sure. Yeah. And still a big part now. Yeah. How'd that all start? Well, I guess it, like, came from skating, just being at the skate park. Um, just wanted to pursue skating, and then scooters started popping up everywhere at the skate park. Um, my little brother actually rode scooters when I skated. So, like, on the awesome. street, he'd be actually... Uh, when I was still skating, like, and all the kids are playing on the street, there were always scooters around. So, like, I'd just jump on and, like, have some fun, like, just learn a few tricks. Yeah. Before I'd, like, actually decided, like, yeah, I'm going to ride scooters. So, like, I was sort of already, like, playing around and learning tricks, whatever. And then, uh, yeah, I was just always borrowing people's scooters at the skate park. And then everyone was just like, yeah, like, just get your own scooter. Because I was just hassling everyone to ride theirs. And then... um. And then uh, there were a couple of um, uh, kids from France that would come and, and visit their grandparents. That the, Their grandparents lived on the street that I lived on. Yeah. And every year they'd come and visit, they were like getting more and more into scootering. And then one year they came here and they got a new scooter and left their old one in Australia. And then I hit them up and I was like, can I just take your scooter like from your grandparents' garage and just start using that? And that yeah. was my first scooter. And then, yeah, just started going to the skate park, Chatswood. What scooter? It was an Oxello scooter. Oh, that thing's trash. Do you know Oxello? Nah. It's like a French brand. I don't know. It's like... <laughs> Bro, I thought you were saying that it was a Razor Pro or something. Oh, I, I did have a Razor Pro, actually. I, I had, like, a Razor A1 and a Razor Pro just to, like, ride on the street. Like, I wasn't trying to... So, was this Oxello thing a bit better? Yeah. It was, like, an actual, like, stunt scooter company so do you I still do that. you still talk to the french people yeah yeah did they yeah. see what you done with scootering yeah like they were still visiting it every year and like we sort of like were coming up together like in the scooter world just going in like comps and stuff and are they actually good uh well they've they've quit now but they were yeah they were both really good yeah yeah that's crazy we're just going in comps together and just riding and progressing it was so fun when they came to visit like they pretty much got me into scootering so um yeah, and then I think it was that same year I got a scooter for my birthday and that was when it like it was on. How old were you at that point? Uh that was my twelfth birthday, I think. Fucking hell. Yeah, so I totally dropped skateboarding, which was like sort of random because I'd like even though I was super young, I'd still like dedicated everything I had to skating. Yeah. And like my vision was like, yeah, I was looking up to all the pro skaters and and like not that I was, like, known or anything for skating, but, like, I was on my way. I was winning a few comps here and there. So yeah, then to randomly, like, go to Scooter and, yeah, I got, like, heaps of shit from, like, skate friends, whatever. But, yeah, just loved it. So Yeah, that's awesome. Who were you looking up to? Oh, let's just... In Scootering. So you've went over to... Yeah, who were you looking up to in Scootering? Well, like, um, I think Cody Donovan, dude. Yeah. You know Cody, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His Punk Scooters video. Fucking hell. And I've seen that. That was like, but that was still years before I got into scooting. Like I was like watching it because scooting was still blowing up at that time. Yeah. And there were just more and more scooter riders like appearing at the skate park and, you know, doing all their tricks. I thought they were really annoying actually. I think I was a hater at, at one point. And then they just overtook the skate parks. Yeah. Yeah. They just took over. Well, like skating was like still is massive. It's not like skating died out or anything, but yeah, scooters were... Take Scooters flooded flooded the skate parks, but yeah. they're coming crazy. And then uh, I just got really into it, yeah. Yeah, and then I'm not too sure how long I've known you for. Dude, I met you at the Street Jam in 2016, remember, at Waterloo? How at old like, am I? How old were you? Oh, I would have been uh, 17, I think. Really? All right, guys, sorry about that big ad break. Hold on, wait, this is the ad break now. Make sure you smash subscribe and also smash like. We don't have any sponsors on this. We're going into, uh, we're just talking about you meeting me. Yeah. Now, who cares about that, all right? This whole thing, that this timeline, like on your timeline, this is where it gets fucking interesting. Mm. What goes on, bro? Well, um, uh, well... 2016 i hadn't started youtube uh so this was march when we met yeah and like uh i just um dropped my welcome to urban art video so i just got sponsored by urban art and um 
I mean, how how far back? Like, was that your first sponsor? No, no, this uh, like, I think twenty thirteen. I got on Scooter Hut. Fuck. So you're sponsored, bro. Like, let's run. Like, so let let's hear your scooter career. Okay. So well, all right. Well, I got into it in twenty eleven. Yeah. Like the first year was just like you know learning how to scooter, just riding skate parks, whatever. Filming heaps of videos with friends at the skate... Like, everyone at the skate park had their own, like, little handy cam and everyone's making vids for their channel, including me. Like, I, I did have a channel back then, but it was just, like, edits. Or I was yeah. filming other people, whatever. Like, I was always into cameras and making videos and scootering and stuff. And then, um... Um... Then... A, a scooter hut opened up the road from my local in Chatswood. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, I got sponsored by them in 2013. That was pretty cool. And then uh, just scootering, scootering, scootering. 2015 was when I feel like I was like really leveled up. So when you so so you sponsored by Scooter Hut? Yeah. Are you doing tours and shit at this point? Oh, like to Canberra. Are you getting like, paid? No, no, no. No money. No. Parts? Uh, some parts. Scooter Hut's a pretty big like brand. Mm, like mm. that was like. Being sponsored by Scoot Hut, was that a bit of a, like, fucking... That's it was a pretty, pretty big, big deal, yeah. Like, I remember when they, like, messaged me and asked me. I was like, no way. I was, like, 13 or something. And, like, I was sponsored like that. Like, I didn't really care about money or even parts. Like, if, like you're a kid, you just want that title of, like, being sponsored. And, like, yeah. it's Scooter Hut, so it's like, yeah, that was, it was pretty cool. And then, so you, you're, you're probably in year seven or eight when you're getting sponsored by on a scooter team. Yeah, I think you're eight, yeah. And you had a few, tra- so, so you done a few like Canberra trips or something, did you? Yeah, I think Canberra was like the only scooter hut trip I went on. But um, yeah, it was just riding, filming videos, like uh, tried to like start a clothing brand in 2014. Seven like that was, Goods. Yeah, Seven Goods. Co- yeah, that was something I always wanted to do, a clothing brand, like... Like, that was all my focus, just, like, like in school, like, the only things that I really showed interest in was, like, in multimedia, we learned how to use Photoshop, and that was, like, so exciting to me, because I could, like, design stuff. Yeah. So, I'd spend all my time in school just, like, trying to revolve, like, every project in school around, like, what I like doing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then I just, I started, like, skipping school heaps, pretty much, like, I swear one year I missed, like, 60% of the days. Yeah. Like, I was just missing so much, and, like, but, like, I was, like, working on my dream, you know what I mean? Like, I had this, like, like, uh, like I felt like I was going somewhere by skipping school. Yeah. And then to everyone else, it was like, oh, my God, this guy's just, like, throwing his life away, throw it, like, he, he doesn't care about an education, he just wants to be at the skate park all day, but to me, that was, like, that was where That's I... That's your passion. Yeah. Like... You go into the skate park. Mm. That f- that that's the most fulfilling thing. Like, yeah, I used just to ride to as park. well. I used to ride yeah, as well. And yeah. It's like you can legit if you could build a little fucking tent, like a little hut at the skate park. You just like live there and then start riding. And yeah, it's it's interesting. Do you find it different? Like how you do ride still, but like mm. back then, you can just sit at the skate park for hours on end. Yeah, like I'd be there from like. God, like so early in the morning until like well i was never done riding i could just keep going but yeah at some point you know you go home and sleep and then you just do it yeah. again the next day but yeah it was just all day and then yeah i was just skipping school to like just go ride and like go to comps and stuff like and um it was hard because like, i feel like no one really like well i didn't exp- like you just scootering so people are like you know where the heck's that gonna get you like yeah. I understand that, like, you know, not everyone's going to be, like, you know, rooting for me in, like, the scooter world. Like, but to me, that was, like, that was my whole life. And then I dropped out of school in 2015 to, like, really focus on it. Yeah. Just riding. Like, I didn't really know where I was going. I guess I just wanted to, like, pursue, like, a like a professional scootering career, which at that time I didn't really realize that still to this day it's, like, hard to just, like, live as a professional scooter rider i think there's only like a few people doing it but like well, where was the money like where's the so like 2015 where's the money like what um are you- so well when i dropped out of school um i got a job at kfc okay so you still were K- working yeah 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 I, uh i left and then yeah i got the job like the school told me i like had to be working like a certain amount of hours a week or something like 
they tried so hard to like not let me drop out. Like they made it this like super scary thing. Yeah. Like no one was with me like for dropping out of school. Yeah. It was like, yeah, everyone was pretty much apparently like the worst decision I could make. But I don't know, I just went for it. Just dropped out. Like I wasn't going anywhere. I pretty much already dropped out before I dropped out. Like, <laughs> no, like at one point, like I was supposed to move overseas and I didn't go to school for like months. And everyone thought I'd moved overseas and then I just came back one day and everyone's like, what's going on? In, in school? Yeah, like when my dad moved overseas, I was supposed to go with him when I was 14. Wow. So like my life could have gone like totally different. Fuck, I just had deja vu. Really? I just seen that. You just saying that or I've just seen that before? <laughs> yeah i'm sure i've said it okay so so you you're working at kfc yeah you're sponsored by still are you still sponsored by scooter hut at this point um no i don't think so they like scrapped their whole team okay yeah like scooter hut got like massive opened a bunch of stores and then i think they just got rid of everyone <laughs> so yous were kind of the stepping stone of just building that yeah something like that and then what was the next next big thing after Scooter Hut? What are you What are you looking at? Um, uh, I was sponsored by Sacrifice at one point, but yeah. like nothing that really was like long term. It was just like, you know, you have a sponsor for a bit. You know, like I wasn't even on any social media at this point. Like, like I had Facebook. Yeah, and that was it. Like I didn't really have a phone like a lot of the time. So like all my friends were like in 2015, like or, or, or 2014, like. Everyone's posting on Instagram, and I'm like, like, like I didn't even care. I was like, what, like, who, like, why do you want to post? Like, I, I just didn't even like. Yeah, wasn't really like I wasn't into so like I was never trying to like pursue like a social media like career. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to scooter. I was working at KFC a couple of like few days a week. Yeah, like three days a week, and that fucking sucked. But like you know, I had, I had to get money, and then um, yeah, I was just scootering every other day. I was filming a, like, right when I dropped out at the start of 2015, like, I dropped out at the start of the year, which is kind of unusual, but started filming a, um, like, a video part. Like, all I wanted as a kid was to just have, like, like, just to make a really good, like, scooter video, like, a proper part. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, just right as I left school, started filming that. And then in September, there was this competition in Melbourne. Yeah. And, like, heaps of my friends were going down. And it was part of, like, it was actually a Scooter Hut competition. And there was two grand on the line for first place. And I was like, I need to, like, go to this comp and win this. Like, I need this, like, money. So then, um, but I went to Melbourne, like, to film anyway. And yeah. then the comp was on the last day. And then, right, actually, right before I went to Melbourne, I quit my job at KFC. And my mom was like, what the fuck? Like, and then, um... Actually, I, I didn't tell her that I quit before I went to Melbourne, but yeah, I quit, had like a few hundred dollars, used that for like a flight, a place to stay, food, whatever. Um, and I actually won the comp. So wow. like, I won this two grand, which was like a million dollars to me at the time. And like, yeah, that was pretty crazy. And then... Um, What'd you do with the two grand? Um, uh... I bought a camera straight away. G7X. No, no, no. This was like still before. I bought a, a 60D, Canon 60D. Like wow. I had a few cameras leading up to this, but like I was filming on like older cameras with like tapes and stuff. And I was like over all the issues that like those cameras yeah. had. So I was like, I'm just going to buy like a good reliable setup so I can just film whenever I want. Because I was relying on like other people's cameras and stuff as well. And yeah, it was always difficult. So I was like, if I can just get a camera, I can just film all the time. Bought the camera for like probably a thousand or something, and then the rest of the money was just to, uh, just like live in the wales, I guess. Yeah. And then um, that was September, and then I like dropped like my first actual video in like November. When you say vi actual video. Yeah, so like like a scooter part, like a full okay, part. Okay, so like that was the big. When, when when he's saying a part, like explain how. Yeah, what so a like part a video means. part, so like. Um, just filming like your best tricks yeah. over like, I think I spent six months on this video. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, every day it was just trekking it all over Sydney to like, just like one handrail or something. Who's then, filming that for you? Um, <coughs> oh, just like whoever, like, um, I was riding with like heaps of people. I was riding with the, uh, with the friendly. Crew, yeah. So, so you're like, with them at that point. Yeah. So like they sort of like brought me into their like crew, 
right yeah. like right after I dropped out of school, which was like really cool because I, I always looked up to them as a kid. Yeah. And um yeah, so that was uh yeah, I was riding with them all the time. Like they were older, so they weren't in school or anything. So like a lot of them were free to ride all the time. And um yeah, they helped film my video, edit it. And then um when that video came out, I I actually sent it to Urbana, yeah. the, the team manager, who I who I had contact with like in 2014 when I had my clothing brand because I sent him a shirt to get in a magazine that he had. Yeah. So like I had that contact there and I just messaged him and I was like, here's my video. Like, are there any spots on the Urban Art team? Real quick before you go on. So you're saying at 14, you're, you've got the mindset of making a shirt. Like like yeah. getting a shirt, designing it, yeah, I and really sending just, it and reaching out to <clears throat> brands. Yeah, like that was just a dream to have a clothing brand. I don't know, I was just like super into that, like a scooter clothing brand. Bro, at fourteen, like that's like there's something going on in your mind where you can see a bigger picture. And yeah, like I I just knew I didn't like I I already hated school, so I was like, you know. What am I going to get out of school that's going to, like, what job am I going to get that's going to make me any happier than, like, how I feel now in school? I, I just always wanted to do my own thing. Yeah. And, like... Um, for kids watching, like, like if they've got a vision, like, fucking go for it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, like, straight, like, like, that's your story. It's pretty much you're working at KFC. You're, everyone's against you leaving school. Yeah. You're sending fucking brands you sh- you scabby yeah. 20 dollar shirt that you've yeah, made so that was when i was still in school like i learned photoshop and multimedia and then like i'd even just be going to like the library like most lunch times and stuff and just like designing stuff and like any spare time i had in school it was just like trying to like do like build something for outside of school it's crazy it's it's very like it's inspiring to hear that and the way that you're you're saying also, so you've dropped out of school and then six months of hard work, like you yeah, like, stacking and fucking... Dude, like the video parts are like so much work. Like, like you know, you see like the two, three minute, you know, final piece, but it's like six months go into that. And so many stacks. Yeah, so many stacks. So many crashes. Yeah. I've luckily never had like a injury that's like put me out of riding. So yeah, I've been pretty lucky there. But yeah, just filming and like... Like every day I just felt like I was on my grind, like just on the train for hours, just to, you know, just go to this spot, spend like three hours trying to get a trick. And then that's like a little three second clip in a video. So to yeah. me, it was like, I was like, yeah, I felt like I was on my way somewhere. Yeah. But, um, you yeah. definitely had a big vision. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what the vision was at the time, but yeah, I just <laughs> wanted to just do that. And then, um, I just kept filming for the rest of 2015. Um, then you got your so so you've done your part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you've, now you've reached comp. out to Urban Art. Yep, and now I had my own camera. Yeah. So now I was, I was just filming way more. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I was like reaching out to anyone that like was a filmer. I'd just be like, could you like you know could we just go like film some stuff, whatever. So what um, happened with what happened when you sent? So you were saying you sent the, yeah. the video to Urban Art? Yeah, and then they actually sent me a deck straight away. Like, I wasn't sponsored or anything, but they were like, we'll send you a deck and just see how it goes. And, um, and like, that was pretty crazy because, like, Urban Art, like, that was, like, a huge brand from, yeah. like, France or some shit. So, like, um, and like, I saw, like, some Facebook memory pop up the other day when I was a little kid and I bought an Urban Art deck. Yeah. And I was like, urban arts the best and stuff so it was like three years later they were like sending me parts it was like it was pretty crazy and then i started filming um a video as soon as i got their their deck and like in my head i was just like this like the video i'm going to film now is going to be my welcome to urban art like i wasn't on urban art or anything but i just sort of was like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna make this happen so i just kept filming and i was like updating the the urban art team manager on like the footage I got sending them stuff every day. Like yeah. what I'm doing, I've just filmed this, whatever. And then, um, 2016 came around. Um, and then I think, yeah, like I got on urban art, like just like privately kept working on the video. And then that came out in, um, March of 2016. Mm-hmm. And then I was on urban art. So how's that go? Like is like, so you've went from scooter hut 
where you're getting fuck all. Yeah, there was Scooter Hut, there was Sacrifice, there were a couple of other like smaller sponsors, whatever, like never paid or anything. Are we mo- urban art? Are we? Are you getting cash? So, um, well, not, uh, well, no. I was getting heaps of parts. They did actually, um, like very shortly after my Welcome to Urban Art came out, which was, I think it was March, they said, um, you're coming to London in June. Wow. And I was like, oh my God, like just to travel like across the world to Scooter, like on a fully funded trip, that was like crazy. So, um, went to London, uh, it was my first time overseas, I think. Yeah. So it was pretty crazy. That's a big trip, like just to be. Yeah. It was like so exciting. Like this was still before YouTube or anything. I was, I I'd just got in like super into Instagram, like early 2016 was when I started, like when I was filming my parts all I was posting on Instagram was like just updates, photos, whatever, like just yeah. anything really. I wasn't like trying to, I wasn't focused on like social media. I was just focused on like the parts and stuff. Yeah. But then um, Instagram started changing. Like remember when you could only do 15 second videos on Instagram? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, um, yeah, social media was like changing, scootering. Like you could now make one minute videos and people were putting like all their best stuff on Instagram rather than filming a part and like, at the time, I was sort of like not about that, but it was so fun to film Insta clips. Yeah. You know, because you walk around lugging this massive camera around for hours all day and now you've just got a phone you can like just film and just put it on Instagram straight away, which is like sort of not really looked down upon in scootering, but at that time it was like... The transition was... People were taking it like... Yeah, and like you know how these like sub industries go, like they don't want things to change and whatever yeah. and like... Um, but I was just like having fun. Like it was, yeah. I was just filming Instagram clips. And then in London, like, um, I met the, the rest of the urban art team who were from like all over the world, which was pretty crazy. Like scooter riders that were like insanely good. Like before I'd even stepped on a scooter, like these were like some scootering legends. I was meeting. Who are we talking about? Like, can we get some names? Um, uh, <clears throat> JD. Is Terry Price there? No, nah, Terry Price isn't there. Oh, nah. dude. <laughs> Who the fuck is JD, bro? JD. Have we got any other bigger names? Dude, oh, dude, JD is pretty big. I oh, I can't. JD, uh, JD, what? Like JD, JD oh, Bug. Got, he's not very. He's, <laughs> he's got the longest last name. I don't know how to pronounce it. Like JD. Oh, he sounds. Rand- he sounds trash, bro. Dude, if, if you're a scooter rider, you know JD for sure. Okay, sorry to all the scooter riders out there. Have like got- Lambert, Judith, um, oh, Yavi Trapat. Oh uh, yeah, dude, there were there was. It was just like super exciting. Like I was in London scootering. Like I was 16 or 17 or something. That's big, eh? Like just flew there on my own. It was so fun. And um, yeah, London was sick. We filmed a video in London. Yeah. Um, And my dad actually came from Germany to visit me in London, which was sick. Yeah, that's Because cool. like everything's like so close over there. So um, I got to see my dad. And um, yeah, he was like so proud. Like he was always like, you know, as a kid, like just pushing me to like pursue what I love doing. Like, yeah. Like he was always like, just telling me like, yeah, just do what you love. Like, yeah. Just, you know? And now he sees you over his side of the world with fucking spot. Yeah. 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 And he always just like thought that was so cool. Like he was always into like, like he used to love coming to the skate park. Like he pretty much got me into skating. Like he can't even stand on a skateboard, but like, I don't know. Yeah. He just like would always um, take me to the skate park. Same as my mom, but my dad was like, I don't know, he was like. Just there supporting yeah, you. Yeah, just more like into it. He just like loved just like learning about like, just like all the tricks and just like the industry and stuff. So yeah, that's um, cool. I got to see him there, which was sick. And then um, came home and um, Urban Art did actually, like they paid for the trip and then they paid me when I got back as well, just for like being in the video, which was sick. How much are we talking uh, like just over a thousand or something. Oh, that's the spoils, bro. <laughs> Dude, it was... That's it was, a thousand bucks for like... So you got flights, accommodation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Accommodation. Food? Living allowance every day. How much are we talking living allowance? Um, I don't even know. They would just like hand me the... Like 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. It's pretty cool. Like just sick. to think because like... And, and we're going to get into talking about Wes and a few other mm. people. Like... um. But you're you're one of the pioneers of the scooter industry through the social media. Yeah, like you well, were you were the social media pioneer. Well, at you this point, was, I wa- I wasn't really like like 
I wasn't really anyone in scootering at this point. Well, I was just coming up at this point. Like, I just got an, on a big brand, and that's, like, sort of, you know, like, if you get a, like, big sponsor, you're sort of, like, now you're more in the, yeah. Sp- I don't know, spotlight of, like, the scootering world, whatever. But, like, I was still just scootering. I had no money sort of thing, like, you know. I did get that uh, that, that money from Urban Art, which was sick bucks. when I got back. So, like, um, uh, as soon as I got back, I got another job, actually, at Toys R Us. Yeah. And I was working there, and it was probably around this time when, like, things started to change. Like, I did start filming another video when I got back, but I was thinking, like, how long am I going to be throwing myself down, like, 20 stair handrails, you know what I mean? Like, do I just keep filming parts? I just felt like there was something more for me, you know? Yeah. And um, so I was working at Toys R Us and then um, Hugo, one of the uh, uh, guys from France that would come and visit, yeah, who like got me into scootering, he showed me Casey Neistat on YouTube one year. Yeah. He's so a this sick, was in June um, when they would- Shout out to Casey yeah, Neistat. Dude, he, he, um, he was like, have you seen Casey Neistat on YouTube? I was like, nah. Like I was watching YouTube, but I never like followed someone. I don't think I ever like subscribed to someone. You know what I mean? I'll just go on there to watch scooter videos and whatever. And then, yeah, Hugo showed me um, Casey Neistat. And I was just watching his vlogs. This is when he was like going daily. Like, he Bro, was, like straight up. Oh, sorry to jump in there. But like Casey Neistat. Flynn showed me Casey Neistat and mm. that's when I started going, fuck this, I want to make videos. Yeah, dude, Casey. Like, sick. Like, that is so weird that you said his name. Yeah, well, he was, like, he was the pioneer of, like, the vlogs. Like, the vlogs, man, yeah. I think, yeah. like, wasn't he the one that, like, I'm sure he wasn't, the, like, first person to do daily videos, but, like, that format of, like, those vlogs, doing it every single day, it was just, yeah. like, it was so exciting and, like, yeah, I was really, really inspired and, um... I had my 60D that I bought with the prize money from that comp. So I just started filming YouTube videos with that. And, and when you say YouTube videos, vlogs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like um, I'd been making like just edits and stuff up until then. And then I started like talking to the camera and like showing personality and stuff. Um, as, so, oppo- as opposed to just like scootering, you know, tricks. So you've got Wes <laughs> doing these Sawn Desi sessions. Is that what it's called? Yeah, so at well, this time, like... Because it's very close and all, all this stuff's all in together. Yeah, so so I met Wes in 2013 at a yeah. comp at, at Chatswood. Yeah. And like, I obviously knew who Wes was because... Did it, Wes win it? Yeah, he did. I was yeah. there. Oh, were you? Yeah, I was there. Oh, yeah, so... I think I've met you years ago, but Yeah, like, yeah, just, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's when I met Wes. And, like, when he started Kovu and stuff, I was actually on Kovu. So, like, I was riding with him and, and you know, everyone else he was riding with at the time. Yeah. Um, and Wes is my older brother, by the way. That's mm. why I'm starting to really know this this story. But um, some cunts knocking at the door. They're going to get launched if they start interrupting this. Okay, so w- with the Sawn Desi sessions, is that what he was filming? Yeah. Like, so did so you inspire Wes, or no, did he so like, inspire? When I started riding with the with the friendly guys in early 2015, um. I like stopped writing. Um, like I, I like didn't see Wes for ages. Like I was like, um, uh, I was riding with like the friendly crew, yeah. and then Wes had like his crew, which was like Kovu, yeah. And um, and then I got into making vlogs. I was just filming like just really anything. Like I like I had nothing to think about because I'd never made a vlog, so it was so easy to just go and do it because yeah. there was no expectation, nothing. Like yeah, like I had no like there was no one watching. Um, but I had like 15 K on Insta at this time. So I could like promote them a little bit. Yeah. You know, link in bio, whatever. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, Wes was doing Sawn Desi sessions and that's how Wes and I sort of like, um, not like we ever weren't friends, but we just like really started getting close at that point. Yeah. Cause like we weren't like, you know, I'd see him on and off like over the, over the like couple of years prior to that, like I'd see him at the street jam, for example, whatever. Um, and uh so you've kind of transitioned from the friendly crew over to yeah wes is filming well, well, can i ask you what was wes filming the the whole like with he was every, doing the the sword desi session it's called yeah. that yeah yeah and then you, and i wasn't really around them at that time but then you've come across and you're doing your own vlogs yeah so so when i started the vlogging like 
at the at that time there weren't many scooter rider vloggers like there was Tanner Fox he'd like blown up massive yeah and um and he's like on like 10 million subs or something now so like he was um he's irrelevant he um <laughs> he's falling he, uh, off bro no he, I, sick. yeah he's cool um <clears throat> uh so when i started vlogging like looking back it's like whatever i was just starting to vlog but at the time it was like I felt like I had to really like make a choice. Am I going to start vlogging or not? Because it like wasn't cool. You know yeah. what I mean? In scootering, like, I don't know, like just social media was changing everything. And like, there were a few people doing it. I can't remember exactly who, like, cause yeah, like the YouTubers just like came out of nowhere sort of. Yeah. And, um, so, so I stopped riding with all the, all the friendly guys. Yeah. They weren't really about the vlogs, which is fine. But, um, I was like, yeah, I, I like, I just really want to do this vlog stuff. So, um, yeah, I remember I went to uh, the skate park one day and, and um, yeah, Wes was filming a Sean Desi session. That's when we all started riding together again. Like, um, Wes, Kai, um, you know. Uh, it was Dunn. cool content. Like, it was sick to watch that happen. Yeah, yeah, From yeah. the outside, like, all you guys kind of can like you were all at the same parks meeting up and you were doing your vlogs yeah and then wes was filming the sawn desi sessions that's what i remember yeah anyway. yeah 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 um yeah so like uh, yeah i started riding with them heaps yeah wes was doing the sawn desi sessions i was doing my vlogs and i was still working at toys r us at the time yeah and like i'd made i i, I remember my first vlog um like i made it edited it, put it on YouTube and it was on unlisted for like a month because I was like too nervous to put it out. Really? Yeah. Wait up, what's going on with your audio? Can you hear me? Hello? Nah, it's gone really quiet. Really? I can oh. hear you. Oh yeah, it's good It's good now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, I was just working at Toys R Us and like vlogging any other day that I had free. Um, I was making like tutorials in the beginning and stuff as well. Um, I was just trying to make like any videos. It was just like really fun. And every day after work at Toys R Us, I'd go, um, I'd go up, um, upstairs in the shopping center to Bing Lee. And I'd like, look at this vlog camera in the glass. And I'm like, I need to get that. Like, this will be so cool. And then one day after work, I was able to go and buy that. And then, um, yeah. Th and then, uh, what camera are we talking? G7? No, nah, no, nah, it was like it was like a mini G7. I think it was a Sony something. Really? I think, yeah. Fucking hell. It had like a flip out screen. Like I just thought like I was really getting into like the vlogs and yeah, I was like, I need like a proper vlog camera. Because I was using the 60D with a fisheye to vlog. It's just like I just wanted a Yeah. A different camera. So I got that. Um I was just making like vlogs around like my local park, whatever, just locals, like just fun stuff, going to ride car parks, just um, just stuff around my local area, whatever. And then, um, I remember like some of the other people that I worked with at Toys R Us, like found my vlogs yeah. and they're like, are you like vlogging on YouTube? And I'm like, Oh, I got to get out of here. So, so, um, <laughs> um, so, uh, what's funny is at Toys R Us, like my section was the scooter section, which was pretty funny. So like I'd be riding scooters around and shit at work. Um, and then, Wes and Kai and um, a bunch of people going to Canberra one weekend and I had work on the weekend and um, I'd been making videos and a couple of them had started to like get a bit of attention and I didn't have the channel monetized or anything because like I didn't know that like, like I was just making vids. I didn't even know if the YouTube was going to go anywhere. Like I didn't set it up like, all right, I'm going to like pursue YouTube and like make my money this way. Like, it was in the back of my mind. Like, I knew that you could. How many vlogs had you done um, since? Oh, probably like 20 or something. Oh, so, 20 working. videos in and it's not monetized. Yeah, no. Nah. But they were getting, like, barely any views, you know. Like, yeah. like I'd be happy to get, like, four or 5,000 views on a vlog. And I was just, like, learning how to do it. Like, yeah, you know, um, just editing, like, on my mum's laptop. Like, I didn't have, like a, 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 like, a laptop or, like, I was just, like, just doing what I could. And, um, and then, uh, you're going to Canberra. Yeah, I'm going to Canberra and I had work that weekend. So I was just like, fuck it. Like I quit the job. Um, and I just went to Canberra. 
because I like you could still see how like your estimated earnings, even though it wasn't set up, you could see how much you were making. Yeah. And I think right before Canberra, I saw that like I was making like just a little less than what I was making at Toys R Us. So I was just like, all right, all I got to do is just like set up this monetization and then, yeah, I could be making as much as I'm making here at this job. So I was like, it was so exciting at this point. I was like, I feel like I'd like found my thing. I was like, all right, YouTube, like this is it. But I was just still making like pretty, you know, ordinary chill vlogs, whatever. Went to Canberra and it was like that time that the channel started blowing up. This one video started blowing up. Yeah. Um, which was like this like security guard video and um uh yeah dunk easy got into it with this security guard and like the video i think it's on like three million views now or something <laughs> was it monet did you get it monetized quick uh i th i think i had the monetization set up yeah oh so you started seeing that fucking yeah I your think subs was... and stuff your subs and your your money would have been starting to go yeah 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 and like um yeah, like the videos were just gaining traction. But like most of all, I was just so passionate about it. Like yeah. I just knew if I kept going out, like I could make it work. Like like that was just always sort of my like mindset, I guess. And like just vlogging, whatever. Um, yeah, this was like November, I think, when we went to Canberra. And um, uh, by that point, I'd actually bought a G7X. Like yeah. the day before I went to Canberra, um, I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to get a G7. I quit the job. And yeah, it was just on from there. Like December was when the channel started to like really go up in subs. And my goal for that year, I think was like, actually my goal for the, f for the following year, 2017 was 20,000 subs. And just in December, like by the last day of December, I hit 30,000, like in the year before. Yeah. So like, yeah, 2017 came around and it was like, yeah, 2017 was nuts. Okay. Let's get into it then. Well, there was like, um, uh, yeah, we were just riding every day, going into the city. So wait up before we get into it. Yeah. So you bought the G seven X. Yeah, yeah. You've done the Canberra trip. You filmed the viral. Yep. I also bought a GoPro actually, like uh, about a week before Canberra. To I do your GoPro hill bombs. Well. To yeah, do yeah, yeah. Bombs. Because I was watching. There were a few uh, BMX riders in New York, like Billy Perry and Austin Orgy. Yeah. That were making like BMX vlogs with the GoPro. Yeah. Riding through the traffic and just like, you know, crazy shit in the streets, whatever, just sketching and just bombing hills and just having fun yeah. in the streets. And I was like, I got to get a GoPro. So I, I remember when I got the GoPro and I made like the first GoPro video, I just went out into the city one day on my own, just testing it out. And that was so much fun. I was like, the GoPro is going to do me wonders, dude. Like <laughs> the GoPro was sick. It was perfect. Like, yeah. um, so I started um so so where's your money so like what so what are you I can't really remember because you've think, quit the job i think yeah, yeah i quit the job in in november or early early december i think yeah and i'd set the monetization up and i think it was the end of december i got my first paycheck off. what YouTube. are we looking at like i was like 500 bucks oh that's shit dude, for the i first thought you were gonna say it's fucking i'm joking no, but like the, dude for the first month like i was getting more from toys r us than i was that's um, sick yeah, and I was making. I'm beans. joking about it being no, shit, yeah. but I thought you were saying five bands. No, 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 <laughs> no, five, five, five hundred. But um, um, yeah. Now I was able to like, now I was making money. It was you know when you start making money, it becomes more like legitimate to other people. It's like, look, mum, like I'm actually getting money from this now. Like, yeah. Um, I sort of feel like I was always trying to like, not really like prove anything to anybody, but I had this like fire inside of me to be like you know I, I don't know i feel like i probably did want to like proof cunts wrong straight up yeah <laughs> like yeah only for the fact that i just feel like for so long it was like oh scootering like it's not going to get you anywhere like when are you going to stop you're going to the skate park every day yeah you know you've just you left school you've just quit your job like what the heck are you doing so i was like just had this drive to like really make it work for myself but yeah, yeah i guess also like yeah, I just wanted to make something out of this, you know, like, because when you're like younger, there's like, you just watch so many people just drop off. Like one day you're riding with someone just going like, you know, they're so into it. And then the next day they just quit. 
Yeah. And he's like, don't see him. Matty Cerevolo, 100%. Oh, I think he's back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he's been... Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if he ever left. <laughs> I think... Oh, yeah, I'm just throwing random names out. Sorry, guys. If dude, I'm it's a funny, fan. actually. Matty Cerevolo, when I... In 2013, I was in Melbourne. Um, I, I went there with my dad one time. Um, Just randomly one morning, yeah, he's like, you're not going to school, we're going to Melbourne. Like, I think that's why I loved... Fuck, your dad sounds like a sick <laughs> yeah, dude, like, Bro, just fun. violins on the plane, just trying yeah, to get like, you to Yeah, mel- pretty much. <laughs> um, it was funny, actually, this is going back a bit, but in 2013, I'm at Riverside Skate Park in Melbourne, and Matty Cerevolo is there with, with Tommy Dang. And, like, I was a little kid. I didn't even know who they were, but they were doing crazy tricks. So I'm like, these guys have, like, got to be, like, pros or something. And I was a little scooter kid with, like, Mad Gear bars, and yeah. they were filming for a Mad Gear video. And they, you know, they just saw like this little scooter kid and they were like, oh, could you like film an intro for the video? So they got me to say like, I love Mad Gear. Matty Cerevalo is the best. And it's just funny because like all these years later, I like. You blew up over him. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> like, I just, you like, left him in the dust, bro. Like, I'll just, you're humble as fuck. And I'm just like, you left him in the <laughs> dust. <laughs> nah, no, like the scooter industry is a, it's a good fucking industry. I like it. Um, where are we at with you? So I got the first paycheck. Yeah. 500. And, um, yeah. 500. And then January. Now I feel like I'd like found my way with the vlogs. I found like a format that worked. Like I had my G7X. We go into the city every day. You know, um, there'd be like at least five to 10 people in like a group every day, just going into the city. Um, and like everyone else had like, who I was riding with had like left school as well. Like we were just all about just like riding. And, um, yeah, the channel was growing like 30 K, 40 K, 50 K. I was just like, oh my God, like I just have to keep making vids. Like this is sick. It was just so fun. Like it was just like scootering before that was so fun, but now I'd found the vlogs. It was like, I just had like this purpose every single day. Like yeah, just wake up intro, just make the vid, like outro edit all night. And it just never ended. Like there was never a break from like, especially from the start of 2017, it was literally like, wake up at the crack of dawn or everything's charged up, go film a vid, edit all night and then do it again the next day. And, um, and I was like going to an internet cafe to upload my videos at the start and stuff. Yeah. Cause there was always shit Wi-Fi at home. Like I could never upload vids. So like, yeah, I was just like doing what I could. And then, um, I went to New Zealand in January of 2017. Yeah. And I remember I hit like 60 K at that point. So like the channel was going up pretty fast. So in a month you've done another 30. Yeah. Like the channel doubled like that quick. Yeah. And, um, and I was like starting to get recognized and stuff, which was crazy. Like I remember like I was at monster skate park one night and it was the night that I hit 10,000 subscribers. And I remember it. And this kid came up to me and he's like, Oh dude, can I get a photo? And I'm like, yeah. Like why? Like, and he's like, (laughs) and and he's like, Oh, I I watched the YouTube and I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. Let's get a photo. (laughs) I was like, holy shit, all right. So, like, I take a photo with this kid. And I'm like, mom, this kid took a photo with me. Like, <laughs> like dude, it was, it was crazy. It was, like, so exciting. And then, um, yeah, so I'm in New Z- I go to New Zealand for the New Zealand Street Jam. Yeah. Um, made a bunch of vids there. Um, um, met Scooter Brad, collabed with him, made a few vids. Yeah. Um, he was, like, yeah, he was going hard on the YouTube as well. So, like, I was trying to just, like, Good you network, know, good yeah, network. Yeah, yeah, just just be around people that, like, were about that because, like, like you were either, like, about it or you just really weren't and you didn't want to have anything to do with it. So, like, um, yeah, New Zealand was sick. The street jam was sick. I actually won that jam, which was, like, that was that was cool. And um, I went there with Kai and Jack McCann. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, came back. Just kept making vids. I sort of forget, like, where things happened at what time but yeah january february it was just yeah vids chaos yeah just yeah putting on the gopro and just going nuts in the city and then um in um march i was like i want to go to america like that was just like (laughs) i just i just thought like if the like that was just always like a dream of mine as a kid it was like america like how am i gonna get there one day like i always like thought about that and um I think at this point I was getting maybe like a couple thousand a month off YouTube. Yeah. So there was a bit of money. And then, um, 
yeah, hit up Urban Art, and I was like, I want to go to America, and they sent me to America, which was like crazy. Like, so you're still sponsored by Urban Art. Yeah, 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 this. yeah. So yeah, um, I'm still an Urban Art, um, and I was just doing the vlogs, and like they were cool with that, like the vlogs. Bro, like, you were much, blowing up. Of course, they're cool with it. Yeah, yeah, but like I swear, like there'd be some companies out there that would just like drop you for like, I don't know, just going to like pursue the social media stuff. But they were super cool. Um. Yeah, I went to America. That was nuts. Like, what happened there? Um, uh, stayed with Will Cashin and, and Clayton Lindley at their uh, at their place, and it was just like riding every day, just like meeting people over there, other YouTubers like Raymond Warner and um, like Capron Funk from the Funk Bros. Just massive. Like you've just went from this Aussie YouTuber on sixty k. Yeah. To fucking, did you collab with Tanner Fox? Yeah, 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 I did. That's yeah, big. actually, that's like, big. The, yeah, yeah, that was, um, yeah, that was pretty crazy. He, um, can't remember what we, we just went to. I think we went to the skate park one night, and he was there, and yeah, he was sick. He was even like, dude, let's like set up a thumbnail and stuff. And he, and I'm like, oh, all right. And he like, <laughs> he's um, he's like, yeah, let's call it like I got Tanner Fox back into scootering or something. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. And um, yeah, that vid went got like um. I don't know what it's on, but yeah, that was like, that was a sick collab. Yeah. I was hoping to like meet up with him again while I was there, but, um, but it didn't happen. Um, I went to like Woodward, which was yeah. crazy. Like, like I'm like sitting on my dad's couch at home as a little kid watching, um, Woodward. camp, camp Woodward on, on, yeah. on TV. And like, I just always thought like, how am I going to get to Woodward? Like, it was just so expensive to go. I was just like, I'm never going to be able to go like, it wasn't even a question I would like ask my parents, like, can you send me to Woodward? It was just like, it's just, I, I don't know, like had to make it happen. So yeah, went to Woodward. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. Went to LA. I went to New York as well, which was sick. So you weren't making a few grand a month. It sounds like you're making a little well, dude, bit Well, dude, Urban Art was paying everything. Oh, so you, you've got sponsored? You've, you've fucking, the sponsor was. Sh yeah, dude, Urban Art was paying my flights. Just like they were paying everything. It was crazy. Business class or economy? Uh, economy. Fuck, shout out to them, cunts. Yeah, dude, it was sick. Were you getting paid at this time from your sponsor or just no, YouTube? No, 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 yeah. It was, never, it was never paychecks. Yeah, it was just, it was, um, it was, it was just travel and like, um, yeah, just travel. travel That's yeah. massive, but like just to yeah. get travel. Yeah, like so I was covered. traveling and then I was also making money off the YouTube vid. So like, I was never really, I always tried to like never spend a lot of money. Like, um, even like back home, like I would never like, I was, I was pretty good with the money, like. Yeah. I didn't, I, I remember like I had everything I needed. I had my camera, I had my scooter. That's all I needed. Yeah. And I remember one day, like, like I just realized that I was in the city and I was like, I've got everything. I don't need anything else in life. Like I have my scooter, I have my camera. Like, yeah. Like that's how you were, you were happy. So happy. Like so fulfilled. Like it was just like the best times. Like, yeah. Like, and you could just like YouTube was good. Cause you could just see progress every day. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, and I hit a hundred k subs in America. Nice, which that's was a, sick. that's a pretty big celebration. Yeah, it was it was it was really cool. Um, and then, um, uh, yeah, the vids were just yeah, it was pretty crazy. Like I even did a, a meet and greet in LA, and like heaps of people came, which was just like crazy to think about. Like, just I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You Since just that. leaving school, like less than two years before that. And now I'm in LA and like all these people are coming to see me. It was just like crazy. Like, yeah. Like going to New York and like getting recognized and stuff was just like. How old are you at this point? Um, 17 or 18. So, yeah. So you, you're making money. Yeah. You, you've got fame. Don't yeah. like the word fame, but you got some fame. Yeah. You got fucking diehard fans. Yeah. Like the fans were always like, especially. I feel like especially back then, like all the YouTube stuff in Scooter Room was so new. Like there were so many YouTubers coming up and it was just like this new wave and it was super exciting. So like, yeah, all, it was always like so much support from the fans and stuff. And um, yeah, America was just crazy. Like just seeing the skate parks and going to the shops there and like the scooter, the famous scooter shops and stuff was exciting. Um, came back from America and yeah, it was just, it was just videos every day. Like, yeah. Never gave myself a break ever. It was just everyday vids, 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 vids. Yeah, it was daily. Mm. And then um, I came back and then around, um, yeah, so that was like April, May. And then uh, 
there's probably heaps of stuff I'm forgetting that happened in this time. But I guess that's all like Yeah, it's it's your story, like you you're vlogging your yeah, YouTube it's just career videos. and Yeah, and, and um and then I did like a, an Australia trip in September. I was just randomly like, yeah, I just want to like do a trip. Like I just wanted to like get amongst like just like the meetups and stuff. Like that was just like, it was just exciting. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was just like, so I was like, um, so urban art covered this as well. Yeah, dude. Oh, they were loaded. Dude. Yeah. It was pretty, it was pretty crazy. Um, how, how'd these meet and greets go? Because I've seen photos, mate. You had fucking hundreds of people waiting outside Yeah, so these like I, um, I went to, I went, I, did, I think I did Gold Coast, um, uh, Adelaide, Perth and Melbourne. Yeah. And it was just like, yeah, I was just flying all around on my own, just like booking the hotels, just like, it was just exciting. Yeah, just making vids. The first meet and greet at the Gold Coast was like pretty big. It was pretty crazy. Um uh i remember like i'd fully organized the whole thing with scooter hut because i was going to do it at the scooter hut stores and i went to the gold coast one and like i don't know they like they didn't know i was coming so there was just this massive line outside the store <laughs> and the employees are thinking like fuck is there a sale or something like and really? then i walk in and i'm like i'm like yo what's up guys and they're like hey man you need a hand with i'm like oh i'm doing a meeting green and they're like oh fuck is that why all the people are here so that, that was like so unorganized but um, <laughs> yeah that was sick i was there for like hours and hours just like yeah it was a huge line of people and then um i think adelaide was next that was massive like yeah it was it, like adelaide was strange because like riding around like you barely saw any scooter riders like it's pretty quiet but then the meeting group was just like nuts like yeah. so many people just sitting there for like hours, just like signing stuff and taking photos was crazy. And then, um, yeah, I did Perth as well. That was sick. And then, um, Melbourne was like the biggest one. Yeah. And I remember like, I was freaking out before I went to the meeting greet in the hotel room. Like I was honestly about to cancel it. Why? I don't know. Like towards the end of the, um, the Oz trip, like this was the last stop. I think in a few days I was going home and I don't know if I was just like, I don't know, tired or something, but I just got so in my head about like, I don't know, because like, I'm trying to make the vids every day, like, so I'm you're trying to upload and I'm traveling and <laughs> like, and like, yeah, it got like stressful and like, I don't know what happened in Melbourne, but like, I remember the meeting greet was at two and I was just like, I don't know why I just couldn't seem to like, I don't know, I don't know, I just was just like, oh, I can't do you this. Had, uh, you had a lot of Yeah, I think I was like just really anxious and like, I didn't usually get too anxious like about this sort of stuff, like, I never overthought much at the time, but then again, like, the videos like consumed my whole mind. Like I think I never gave myself time to like think because I knew that would just like just mess everything up. I just had to stay so like busy. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so busy. Yeah. And I remember it was like two o'clock and like Scooter Hut's calling me like, where are you dude? Like there's a fucking massive line here, dude. And I was like, <laughs> all right, I gotta go. I gotta go. So I called a taxi. I got there super late. But as soon as I saw like the crowd of people and shit, I was like, like, yeah, I felt, I felt good. I was like, all right, like, this is crazy. Like, all these people here, like, to support me. And, like, it's just a massive line, like, all the way up the street. It was nuts. And, like, the Scooter Hut people were always, like, they were serious about, like, not letting it get out of control. Because Tanner did a meet and greet in Melbourne in 2016 that went fucking nuts. Like, yeah, heaps of cops came and shit. Like, there was, like, I don't know, it was, like, a fucking rampage. Um, but I, I, like, loved just making noise. Like, I just, like... They're telling me to just like chill and shit, but I'm just like running Whoa. through the crowd with holding the camera up, just yelling. Everyone's going nuts, and um, and you just by yourself at this point. I was by myself the whole time, like the entire trip, like editing, filming. Yeah, it was filming all day. Ideas, yeah. Like, go back to the hotel, edit, upload. Yeah, I had export. my laptop in the back of Scooter Hut, uploading a video as I was doing the meet and greet. Like, it was, man, it was that's dedica like, that's that's dedication, and that's what hard work pays off. Yeah, it was it was so it was so difficult, but like I loved it. That was the most important thing. Like nothing could. I felt like nothing could like stop me. Like, and um and at this point, like yeah, the money was. I don't know how much I was making at this time, but like I wasn't really spending anything, so it was like I was just just had money, like, and like. Yeah, like to get that two thousand in that competition, that was like massive. And now to just be doing exactly what I want to do and making, you know, more than enough money to just like, I was still living at home and stuff. Like I was didn't have many like expenses. Like I wasn't like paying rent and stuff at this point. So, um, but 
yeah, the Oz trip was crazy. What happened after that? So after that, I remember um, it, the videos in Sydney were sort of getting hard to make. Oh, let's just, so so. How many subscribers are you sitting on after? Because your oh, so, network's growing. Yeah, through. so I'm around like 150, 160 k. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot on YouTube. Yeah, it was, and we're it not was, talking about yeah. fucking TikTok. Like that's YouTube. That's hard work. Yeah, like and this was like five, six years ago too. So it was like, yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. And um, but the channel had started to sort of like plateau a bit. It was it wasn't like like blowing up at this point. It was it was more like sort of, you know, a few hundred subs a day or something. It was it just sort of like leveled out a bit. Yeah, and the videos were getting like difficult to make in Sydney because like, um. Like, a lot of people were quitting riding at this point. Like, you know, people just get to the point where they just, you know, quit, whatever, like I've seen earlier. And, like, um, it was just difficult to, like, I guess come up with ideas and stuff. Like, because I was going into the city every single day. And um, and at this point, like, everyone was making their own vlogs as well. So, like, the Saw and Desi sessions ended earlier in the year. Kai started his own vlogs. Yeah. Everyone was making their own videos. And, um, yeah, like, the group, it... Um, yeah, I guess like just things were like changing and the videos were getting a bit harder to make. I started going out on my own a lot in Sydney to make videos and I was just like, I don't know, I felt like um, actually in Melbourne, Wes called me um, um, and like, yeah, I was, I think it was after the meet and greet. Yeah. And he called me and he's like, oh dude, what if like I filmed for your channel? <laughs> And I was Wes, like, Wes is my older brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's, he's business. Uh, uh, is the audio all right? I'm fucking. My ears are fucking up, eh? So so Wes is my older brother. His business mind starts thinking and seeing mm. all these cunts at the meet and greet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, he just called me. Yeah, I think it was like the um, like a couple of days before I had I was coming home, and like um. Yeah, I think I was like anxious in Melbourne and stuff because I, because I knew that when I got back to Sydney, like I was going to be a bit stuck with the vids. Yeah. And um, yeah, so Wes was like, um, yeah, what if I started filming? And then we just started talking ideas. Um, and I think it was like the next day I woke up and in Melbourne, I went straight to the camera store and I bought, um, I bought like the, the mics. Lapel. Yeah. And I was like, all right, yeah, like we're doing this. Came back from the Oz trip. We're you inspired by a few people. Uh, me, me and Flynn were out there filming these videos. Are you making vids at this point? Oh, oh bro, yeah. shut yeah, yeah. up, Jack. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? No, no, no. Mate? I'm forgetting. Late 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, What mic are you using, Luke? What mic are you using? I need to get one. <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad, my bad. Nah, yeah. Um, but this was like before, like, um, like, you'd like blown up massive. Cause I remember when like you did the silly salmon thing and Wes and I were out filming one day Yeah, and we've just heard these guys jumped off like the Piermont bridge or something. <laughs> and, and cause like all the security guards knew Wes and I from filming the videos, like they came up to us that day and like, they thought that like I'd done it for a video. Yeah. They're like, you didn't jump off the Piermont bridge. We're like, no. And then you called us and you're like, yeah, I've just done a silly salmon off the Piermont bridge. <laughs> and we're like, dude. Um, so so yeah, the first day I got back to Sydney, Wes and I went out and filmed a vid. Yeah, and um, it felt so good to like have a filmer because I had like this new like freedom. I don't know. I was just like, I could be more in the videos, sort of. Yeah, and, you weren't um, holding the camera and worried about where it was pointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, like I could just do my thing, and like I could do more. Like you know, just started doing more like public interaction stuff, and it was so good just having like the little mic and. Yeah. yeah, that was a sick setup, and like we made a couple of vids, and um, uh, they went like all right, just sort of the same as like um, like however my videos were going. But I knew that like I, I said to Wes at one point, I'm like, dude, like like we got something here, like let's yeah. just keep making these vids. Like I just knew like because it felt fresh again instead of like I don't know the vlog started becoming like yeah a bit of like a drag. So. Um, yeah, we made a few vids. People were loving them. Some people were saying, you know, just do the old stuff, whatever. But, like, I knew this was what, like, I, I had to be doing. And then, um, like, a week after we started filming, there was the Brisbane Street Jam. Yeah. And um, so we went to that. And, uh, yeah, well, the Brisbane Jam was, like, out of control. What happened? Uh, <laughs> so this was, like, a week after Wes and I had started filming. 
And, um, yeah, we just went to Brisbane just for the jam. Like, it was just, you know, a jam is sick. Um, and we just wanted, like, just to get out of Sydney for a bit, just, you know, content-wise. Um, so we went to Brisbane. Uh, fucking, like, it was crazy, like, because the channel's time, popping at this point. First so. time you ever got arrested? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, um, so, like, the jam's coming up. We had a few days... Uh, just like riding parks, whatever. And then the jam day came up and like, we didn't think much of it. We were just like, we're just going to a jam. Like we've been to plenty of jams before. And um, I remember that morning, like I was just editing a vid, whatever. We were super late to the jam. And, um, but like we'd said on social media that like we were going. Yeah. And um, yeah, we just got an Uber into the city and like, th there was like a massive crowd of people. There were already like police and stuff there. It was already sort of like out of control, whatever. And then we rocked up and it just like started just going nuts. Like, like with the camera out, people just want to be on camera and just like be in the vid and stuff. And like the jam itself sort of like, it wasn't like a failure or anything, but like, I think, I don't know, like there wasn't much control over it. Everyone just wanted to be like. It turned into the Jack Doubt show. Yeah, pretty much to be honest. Like, like I've seen the video, you were getting chucked in the back of a paddy wagon. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, what else happened? Did you do anything illegal or were you the, did the police look at you as a Well, ring, when we turned master? up, they noticed straight away that like everyone was like flocking to just like Wes and I filming this video. But at this point, the, I, like as soon as we rocked up, the police were already like threatening to take people's scooters and stuff. So like it was already like, like we didn't like bring the police there. Like they were there already. And then, um, yeah, the first spot was cool, whatever. And then, like, we're riding from spot to spot. Everyone's all over the roads, as you do in a street jam. Like, um, I remember, like, some people were trying to, like, make out as if, like, I was encouraging everyone to, like, ride on the roads. But, like, that's just what happens at a jam. Like, yeah. You've been to jams. Like, that's yeah. just what happens. So, um, yeah, we're going nuts. The police went up to Wes at one point because he had the camera. And they, like, almost arrested him. Like it was a, it was almost Wes that, that that got arrested, and they were like, and like I took the camera off him and filmed it, so like it's in the video, and they're like holding him and talking to him, because everyone wanted to like be in the in 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 the there camera. There was thousands of people across the Brisbane streets, like like a fucking yeah, well, protest. We, like the police didn't know what to do. Yeah, so every spot we were riding to, there were police following. It was like police escorts, and like people like skitching the cop cars and shit and like it's just going nuts dude like we're like right we're like it was crazy like um and then we got to this one spot in this big intersection and there was this like i don't know like some stairs that which was one of the spots that everyone was gonna ride and at this point there were like the whole intersection was shut down i don't know like where this is exactly in brisbane but like there's just so many cop cars rocking up because i don't think they knew what it was for like yeah i think they thought it was a protest or something <laughs> And, um, cause like, I don't know, it's like a street jam. And then, um, yeah, I remember I like climbed up onto this wall to like get a like high up shot of like everyone yeah, to get a thumbnail. And it was actually the thumbnail. So, you know, it's just trying to just doing what I had to do, you know? Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then I'm up on this wall and this one, like, um, like a bunch of cops step out of this one van and they all just point at me and I'm just like, oh shit. And like. There, there'd been cops there the whole day, but I just knew, like, this point they gave me, I was like, oh, shit. Like, I just knew it's like they'd, like, figured something out, and I was like, oh, shit. So I started getting down from the wall. Like, at this point, they'd figured that, like, well, they thought that, like, I'd hosted this, like, protest or something. So I was like, shit. So I jumped down from the wall. <laughs> and the thing is, like, there's so many people around me the whole entire day, like, just asking me questions and, like, just saying stuff. So, like... There's this big wall of people around me. And then I just hear someone say like, Jack, watch out, watch out. And like these cops just like appear like through the swarm of people. And one of them goes to like tackle me and they're like, you're under arrest, you're under arrest. And I was like, oh shit. Um, the cop that tried to tackle me like totally missed and fell on the stairs, which <laughs> I don't know, like he's got to work on that move. But um, no, that, that wasn't like, I was like, are you all right, bro? Um, anyway, like, they, t they just ripped the camera out of my hand. Oh, yeah, because I had the camera. I took the camera from Wes because he almost got arrested just for pretty much having the camera. So I was like, oh, I'll take it from you for a bit just yeah. to let things cool down. So obviously the fucking total opposite happened. And um, 
yeah, so like it's just gone from absolute chaos, so much adrenaline. Like I'm full, like at some spots I'm like climbing up onto shit, like just like yelling, like at everyone, like make some noise, like just going nuts, like just booing the cops and shit. Just, I don't know. I was just, I wasn't really thinking. I was just, it was just a crazy jam. And then it went from that to just like, I'm under arrest just so quick. I was just like, it's like the total like opposite to, to the, like the whole day. And then, yeah, they had my camera. They put me in the back of a paddy wagon and like someone got it on film. That's all I really cared about, you know? Um, <laughs> got to get the views. Yeah, someone got this like full zoom in shot. I'm like, perfect, bro. <laughs> it was all worth it. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I'm in the back of this paddy wagon, dude, like sitting there and it's like really quiet in there. Like it's gone from all this noise to just like, I'm just sitting there in silence. I've still got my little mic on. I'm like talking into my mic. I'm like, if the camera's still recording, like, I mean, so I'm like, I'm still in vid mode, dude. Like I'm, yeah. all I care about is the vid. Like I was like, I didn't care that I knew you around. had a big viral and there was cash. Yeah. I'm coming. just like, yeah, dude, I'm just like talking into this little mic in the back there. Just like, Oh, we got a banger. Um, <laughs> And, and as I'm sitting in there, some kids come and open the fucking paddy wagon and try and get me out. They're like, get out, Jack, quick. And I'm like, guys, guys, thanks for the support, but <laughs> let's, let's just close the doors, all right? So, so I'm sitting in there, like, I probably locked it myself. I'm like, guys, stay away, go ride the jam. Um, and uh, yeah, and then like someone gets in the, in the driver's seat and we start driving I've lost my camera. Like that's got all the footage on it. I'm like, please don't delete anything. Take care of the camera. Cause they just like ripped it out of my hand. And I'm in the car. I'm in like, we're getting driven somewhere. I didn't know where I was going. Like I'm not from Brisbane. And, um, and I was like, so scared. I, like, dude, dude, I was scared. They were going to like rip me out of the paddy wagon and shit. Cause like, I don't know the way they like arrested me. I was like, these guys aren't playing around. But then, um, yeah, the dude was actually like super chill. We went to the police station. He just asked me like, questions about what was going on i'm like yeah it's just a jam like i'm from sydney just filming a vid whatever and then um uh um yeah they let me go where's um i was just saying to him the whole time as he was asking me questions i'm like dude like i know it's probably not important but like where's my camera like and he's like oh that doesn't matter i'm like dude it does like this is this is like um like i've still got my mic on like just talking into it just in case i'm like <laughs> Um, so in this time, like Wes is trying to get the camera back. Yeah. He's like yelling at all the cops. Like, where's the camera? Um, so he's at the police station. And, yeah. I'm probably going to take these off now. Um, yeah. Wes came and got me from the police station. Yeah. And they were like, um, yeah, don't go back to the jam. We went straight back. Um, <laughs> raided a Red Bull car on the way there. Just, just got a bunch of Red Bull. Just, yeah, straight back to the jam. And, um, it was so funny, like, I rocked back up to the jam, like, everyone thought, like, I was gone, and I rock up, and everyone's like, he's, I'm like, I'm free, I'm free, and like, <laughs> and Channel 9 is there, yeah, filming, yeah, and I'm, like, standing at the spot, like, I couldn't ride anymore, I was, like, just so much adrenaline, and, like, I was just, like, what's going on, like, like my mum's calling me, like, what the fuck, like, because there was this post on, like, the news had started posting it on yeah, Facebook, yeah, yeah, so I'm standing there on Facebook, like, uh, like scooter protest, um, social media star arrested. And I'm like, oh my God, dude. <laughs> it was all over the news. Dude, guys. I was just like, oh my God, like this is going nuts. And like, so I'm just standing at this spot thinking like, Wes and I like, dude, like we didn't know if we was like, should, should have gone back to the jam. But, um, and then like channel nine turned up, they start interviewing everyone. And like, yeah, like, um, I ran straight over to the news and like grabbed the mic and I was like, yeah, subscribe, whatever. Like, uh, um, and then, uh, um, yeah, people are doing like crazy flips and stuff at this spot, but like, it was just like, it was weird. There was thousands of people. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was out like, of control. Was like, that was the fucking, biggest jam I've ever there's been There's people to. filming from the buildings and the whole street. Oh yeah. Like there were just so many, yeah, there were, there were like, Everyone was on the street just filming. Like, they didn't know what was going on. It was this massive fucking rampage of scooter riders. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, this like the rest of the jam went on. Um, and then at the last spot, Channel 7 turned up. Yeah. There were like a few news stations there. Like, and like, there were still heaps of cops, but I don't think they like, I don't know. I think I'd like changed my, like, I don't know. I, 
I was like staying low key because I didn't want them to know that I'd I'd come back to the jam, and um, and then uh, fucking Claudius Batesi rocked up like right at the end of the day, <laughs> which was so random, um, and then. Yeah, so it was still, like, heaps of hype and stuff, whatever. The jam ends. Crazy fucking day. We go back to the hotel. And, like, I can't remember exactly, like, what happened next. But, um, what was it? I think there's, like, there's a few things on the news about it, I think. Yeah. Like, on, like, the actual TV now. And we're in the <laughs> hotel room just, like, watching it. <laughs> and then, um. The project gives you a ring. Yeah, so so we're in the hotel and my phone just starts ringing like nonstop. I answered the phone once and it was some radio station, and I answer the phone and it's like it's like this like weird noise and then I just hear like yep yep we've got him on the line and I'm like hello who's this like and they're like Jack we've got you on I don't know one oh five like something and I'm like am I on the radio right now they're like yeah mate yeah mate so what's what 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 happened and I'm like I just started like I don't know plugging merch and shit or something. <laughs> I was like, merch coming, merch, merch on the way. I don't know what radio station this was, but like, um, and then I'm just like getting calls and messages, people like trying to get me on there. Oh yeah, 106.9 Nova like called me and they were like, yeah, we want to um, have you come in and like do an interview, whatever. And the project also called me. Like people were messaging me, like mutual friends on Facebook saying like, oh, I have like an auntie or someone that works for the project. They're trying to get in contact with you and stuff. So um so I got on the phone to the project and they were like, yeah, we want to have you come in and stuff. And I was just like, yeah, I was just saying yes to everything because it was yeah. just like, let's do it. Network, network yeah, exactly. all over the place. It was place. just like, let's try and like, just like drag this out. Like this is big. And um, uh, so the next day I went and did, I went to Nova, like the place where they do the, like the actual like, um, yeah. you know, recording studio, whatever. Did like an interview and they were like, um, oh, I, I did the project first, actually. I did the project. And, um, yeah, we went there. We we um, yeah, we um, drove all the way to, like, the Channel 10. Is it? I think Channel 10. Yeah. Um, and, and I remember there was, like, this guy on a motorbike, like, following us all the way up this massive hill. And we got out and there's, like, the security to, like, let you in and stuff. And this dude on the motorbike kept going past. And he's like, fuck you, jacked out. I'm like, dude, what's going on? Like, I don't know, like, because this was all over the news and shit. So it was like, yeah, yeah, people were like, just finding out about me through this. When you're in that, when you're in that mode on, you know, you've, I don't know, you're at 150,000 subscribers. Yeah. The, the Australia's national news is fucking picking up on jacked out being arrested and all that shit. You, you can't do anything else but just try and network through the. Yeah. It, like, yeah, and, like, the news was only talking about that one particular day, like... Yeah. I don't know, like, they could have thought anything, like, but... Yeah, this was just, like, that one particular day that was, like, all in the news and stuff. I did the project, and then, um... I, I was hoping I was going to be, like, on the set with all the other people, and, like, I was going to pull some stunt or something, like... <laughs> honestly, I was going to, like... um, But it was just, like, a... um Green screen. Green screen sort of set up. I think I dabbed on the news or something. I don't know, dude. But um, <laughs> um, it was really weird doing the interview though because like I wasn't there and like it was yeah. just like weird doing it through the earpiece and stuff and like they cut heaps of shit. Like they edited it like the way they wanted to and stuff. And um, uh, then we went back to the hotel and then like the interview was on the news and we're watching it in the hotel. Just like it came on and we're all just like, yeah, like it was crazy. And then, and then we get a knock at the door at like eight o'clock at night and I open the door and it's the, it's the manager of the hotel and he's like, Oh, um, you guys have got like half an hour to pack your stuff and, and just, and like get out of here Shit. because, um, he obviously saw the news and then he like looked at the channel and I'd been like doing like tricks into the hotel Reckon, pool on the oh, scooter. Oh yeah, wrecking the whole <laughs> so hotel. Like, yeah, so he's like, yeah, you got to get out. Like we've seen you like, you know, doing feebles on the pool side and shit. I'm like, so oh, fuck. So, but like, that wasn't like, nothing was really like bad at this point. Like we're getting kicked out of the hotel sick. Like, let's like document this. So yeah, we pack all our stuff. Um, Chris was there as well. It was, yeah. it was, it was me, Wes and Chris. Um, and, um, and uh, yeah, so we go to another hotel that night 
kicked out of that one straight away because that hotel had notified every hotel in the area. Wow. So we just checked into this like sick hotel and then, yeah, we got kicked out straight away. So we went like so far away, got another hotel. Um, and then, yeah, the next day I did, I did Nova. And Nova was funny because they were like against the project because the project were like trying to put it on me. Like oh, I've right, just caused yeah. this like havoc. Yeah. And then, yes, yeah, so that was fun. And um, yeah, came back to Sydney. And I think the day after we came back to Sydney, we filmed that uh, little pump video. The yeah. virus. So, yeah. How many, the, how many views was that? Uh, well, it's on like 21 mil now, but it was, it was, um, yeah. it started blowing up pretty quick. Like the content had started to change. Like it was still, there was still scootering in it, but like it was, there were like pranks incorporated into it now and like just public interaction stuff. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, we did that, that blew up and, and that was like when the channel had its second blow up. Yeah. And I remember like, it was a few days after we put that video out and Wes, remember when he like, um, hurt both of his legs in Surrey Hills and I think yeah. he, he came and picked him up. Yeah. So he's like laying on the ground. He's just like fucked both of his ankles. Like they could have been broken for all we knew at that point. He like couldn't stand up and we're thinking like, fuck, what are we going to do? Like. Like we need to be filming and as he's like laying on the ground and we're thinking, oh my God, the vid starts blowing up, the little pump vid. Because we're like sitting there for hours and I'm like, dude, the vid's on like 100K and then like half an hour later it was on like 150 and like, and like, yeah, that video started blowing up. Um, and then, uh, you yeah. lived off it for a few years. <laughs> well, dude, it, it's, it got demonetized pretty fast because oh, like back it? then you could use any song for like eight seconds or something. Yeah. And now YouTube's like cracked down and everything. So like that's been demonetized for ages. Wow. But um, yeah, it was, it was good at the time. And then like, yeah, the channel was blowing up. I remember, um, I think the channel did um, like on Social Blade, like you see the stats, it's like however many views per day and it was up to like, five million views in a in in like i know it was like millions and millions that's crazy every day and like and the, then the subscribers would have been coming in as yeah well. it was like 5k subs a day it was just yeah. going nuts and like yeah wes and i were just filming like every day just yeah going city filming stuff channels blowing up again so yeah it was on like 170 before we started filming and then um yeah we hit like 200 250 and then i think the channel was on 300k um like we d the channel doubled just from like September or October until the end of the year. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, 2018 comes around and fuck. What happened? Um, well, I remember, I, I don't know, like it just would have been a bunch of things. Like, I don't know. I just, well, as I said, like I was never giving myself a break and like, um, I don't know. I think I started to like get into my head about like the new type of content that was going on on the channel. I don't know. Like maybe I did feed into like some of the comments a bit saying like, just do the old stuff again. And like, this was like my channel. Like I'd grown this from like nothing. Like I cared about it so much. Yeah. And like, I just think I let like just too many like emotions and shit get in the way of it. And like, um, yeah, we we're filming like every day. And then some days like, I just called it off. I was like, yeah, I just can't film today. Like, and like Wes was down to film every day, but I was just like, some days I was like, yeah, I just can't. Or sometimes I just like, wouldn't even turn up. And like the channel was blowing up. So I was like, I just felt like I had to make a decision. I was like, because I knew if I just kept going, it was going to go nuts. Like, yeah. And, um, and yeah, dude, I don't know. Like I can't, it was just like so much. I don't know. I just felt like I just... You were overwhelmed with everything. Yeah. And then like going out to film the type of videos we were filming, like I'd get anxious as well. Like yeah. it was all stuff, you know, it was, it was revolved around like going up to people and like, it, I don't know, like it took, I don't know, I guess it took like a lot of confidence and then sometimes I just like couldn't do it. And then I guess just one day I just like called it off. I just called Wes one night and I was like, dude, like, yeah, I'm not going to film tomorrow. Like, I don't know, like... I'm just going to like stop for a bit. And then I stole him as a filmer. Yeah. And then he started filming you. <laughs> and then I started blowing up. Yeah, dude. I remember like <laughs> straight away. And, um, no, nah, on a serious note, where'd you, so your, so your mental health starts playing a, 
Yeah, it, I'd say like towards the end of 2017, I don't know, it would have just been a combination of like the channel's blowing up again, like I'm trying to film every day, like you get lost in it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like your life becomes like one big video because like, I don't know, it's just like, I don't know how the, like I have so much respect now for like the massive YouTubers that just keep going who have like, you know, just such a big, you know, so many people viewing it and they just keep going every day. I don't know. Like I, I just like couldn't do it. Like I had to stop. Yeah. And like, that was like so bad because like I'd just done something every day for years. Didn't give myself time to think about anything. And then I stopped and it was just like, I felt so weird knowing that like I wasn't waking up to go film a vid, but like it felt good in the beginning. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm just going to like go and just like, I was still writing and stuff still filming instagram stuff but it was just like not the youtube yeah and um i don't know i feel like i've been talking for so long now no then you go on to did you become a rapper oh well well i went like i fully went like ghost off all social media for like a month no you know what before we get into that the scooter brad guy oh yeah the scooter brad guy. so so while you're blowing up and you're you're doing your thing. Yeah. You had a you had a guy with like a pretty big YouTube channel getting pretty big views. Mm. How long have we been running for, Adam? One hour. Oh, sorry. Almost two hours. One hour, 51 minutes. Oh, shit. Okay. We'll wrap it up soon. Um, so, Scooter Brad, he, yeah. he, while you're dealing with your, your health and your mind and stuff mm. like that, your mental health, this guy's running you into the ground every chance he could get. Yeah, like we started, um, like I, I was friends with Brad like early in the year when I went to New Zealand, I said for the street jam, but um, yeah, he just like, well, the channel, well, I, I don't think he was a fan of like the new vids that I was making. Yeah. He was just like. He was jealous. I don't know what he was. Because you started to blow angry. up. Yeah, and like, um, yeah, it just started just started blowing up and yeah, it was just like every chance he got, he would like try and just, I think he was secretly obsessed with you. Yeah. I think he, I think he still might be. And I think he's, he's, I think he is actually my biggest fan. Yeah. I think he is. But I would have, I would have like, I wouldn't have been able to take that type of the way he was just constantly going at you. Like there was something unhealthy in his mind. And, yeah. I mean, and, like, and I think he might've had a big, um, input in you slowing down on the videos yeah maybe like yeah because i i was always thinking like dude this guy's never gonna stop like trying to just like tear me down yeah so i don't uh i don't know like after after like our last like back and forth beef drama whatever you want to call it in like september like i just stopped like talking about him and like i was just I just, like, didn't... I was just focused on, like, what I had to do. I wasn't trying to get involved in, like, just, like, you know, bullshit. Like, his content was revolved around, like... He was, like, the Scooter News, so... Yeah. His content was just, like... But he was obsessed with you in a weird way. Yeah, honestly. And then you met him in Barcelona and... and yeah, and so... And he called so, you out in front of everyone? Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I stopped the vids and stuff. And then later in the year, um, I think it was, like, April... Um, I think I got back on YouTube vlogging again, but like it never felt the same. It was like, I feel like when I stopped in 2018, like that was when I like quit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I did come back a few times with vlogs, but it was just like, I don't know. I was just felt like so lost on like just where I was at. You know what I mean? Um, yes. Yeah, so I went to Barcelona for like the world championships, like just to watch it. And um, yeah, I saw Brad there <laughs> and um well, yeah, he was just, like, confronting me and shit. You should have just fucking smacked him. Yeah, I didn't know what the fuck to do. I mean, he was always approaching me with, like, a bunch of people and shit. Uh, always when I was just on my own and, like, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck him. But I think Yeah, I don't really care. Like, it's that's not really something that, like, especially now, like, I don't Yeah, care. but back then, it, he, I think him just going at you all the time probably influenced yeah. you stopping. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I'm and sure, then, like, that's... Some sort of an impact, yeah. Let's skip forward to like, so you become a rapper. That was trash. <laughs> that was trash. Yeah, um, I agree. You probably come back to vlogging a few times. Yeah, probably a few times throughout 2018. But like, um, 
Yeah, like I feel like a lot of my like mental health stuff like started to like I started to like see it and like feel it like it got like sort of like now that I wasn't making vids and like I just had all this like time of you know like I didn't know what to do with myself like looking back I've realized I just have to like stay busy and stay focused on something otherwise I'll just like my mind will just like derail you know yeah so like I never really like found my feet again as far as like social media went and I was always like oh it's just I was like deactivating my insta like every other day like i didn't know what i wanted to do and like it was just weird because like the channel was blowing up going nuts and then i'd stopped and then like i was sort of kind of coming back but not really and like yeah the channel was just like starting to actually i think for like the next couple of years the channel was still like going well because <laughs> there were so many vids like yeah it's quality content as that well was still like sort of blowing up yeah. Um, but where do you go? So so skip forward to you completely go on missing. What, is that recently? where we're... I think yeah, I went yeah. missing a few times. No, no. The big miss... The big like... All right. So, so 2018, um, that year, I don't even remember. I was scootering sometimes, but like I started just like, I don't know, staying home more. Just like, I don't know. I just, I just didn't know what to do really. And I'd, I'd also dropped Urbana at the start of the year, which was like... I, d I don't really have any regrets. Like, I don't regret that, but was really fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, but my mind was, like, all over the place. Like, like, that's just, you don't just message a sponsor that's just sent you all around the world and just be like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm like, I'm done. Like, I quit scootering. Like, I'm not doing any of this anymore. All of a sudden, out of nowhere. Well, fuck. Are you still, can they, can you reach back out to them? Oh, I could, but I don't. I don't know. Maybe try and you know. Get Maybe a few they more actually trips. messaged me the other day, like they're making some like magazine or something, all to do with like the history of urban art and like. Oh fuck yeah! This podcast might get a plug. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> you are one of the. I reckon, like, when you talk, you're very humble, but like, you were one of the biggest YouTubers in this country. Um, like. There's gamers and all that stuff, you know. They fucking... But, like, I reckon, like, the street content and stuff, you're one of the mm. biggest YouTubers in this country. You're sitting at, like, six or 700,000 subscribers right now. You work super hard for it. Um, you see, like, I wasn't watching any YouTubers, like, when I was doing YouTube. Like, I was never really, like... I was making YouTube vids, but I wasn't watching, like... I didn't really know much about the platform, to be honest, like... And, like... Um, yeah, like... At that time when I quit, like, I I probably wouldn't have if I, like, just knew a bit more about the... Pl or I don't even know. Like, it was years ago now, but... Yeah. Um, yeah. Skip it's, forward. Where are you at now? Like, what... what is there is there anything that we're missing in between? Well, uh, not really. Like, the years went on, whatever, like, riding on and off. I was coming back to YouTube every now and then. I'd usually, like, get sort of excited and vlog for, like, maybe a few weeks or a month, and then I would just get over it. Yeah. Um, that went on, whatever. Uh, and then I think like my, before I've just come back to YouTube now, in 2020, I came back right when COVID had started. Yeah. I came back to YouTube. I was feeling pretty good. I was able to like move out of home. I got a little spot in the city, which was sick. That was like always something I wanted. And then like, again, it was just like, like, like there was so much shit. I was like trying to like, like, I, I guess I was, like, dealing with in my mind, like, it was just, like, I just could never, like, I just started thinking, like, I'm never gonna, like, find that, like, happiness and that, like, feeling I had when I was, like, doing the YouTube, like, you know, all those years ago, and, like, yeah, it was just, um, I moved out, but then right after I moved out, I just stopped making vids again, because I was just, like, just wasn't it. Like, You're, is it ADHD? Uh, well, I'm, I, 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 I'd, I'd like I did get diagnosed with ADHD when I was a kid, but like yeah, you've got that, bro. Yeah, no, definitely. Anyone that's with ADHD, they're never satisfied. Yeah, you have a million bucks sitting there in a pile, and you're not satisfied with it. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I feel the same way. One day I'm a podcast cunt, the next day I'm fucking calling police pigs and shit. <laughs> yeah, it's it's difficult, like doing the social media shit, like yeah, with that. But um, so in your big break, did you? Did you, like, the big break I'm talking about where no cunt could Yeah, yeah, so, like, I, I moved back home. Yeah. 
And then uh, that was like early 2020, stopped making vids, moved back home. Like fully, I was just like done. Like that was like, I just, after that, after I'd like started again and moved out and then now to quit and go back home was just like, oh my God. Like, so I just like pretty much let it all go. And I was just like, 2020 was like the rest of the year. It was just like, got worse and worse. Like I was like never going out. I was never doing anything. People always hitting me up to do stuff. I was just never interested, never scootering. Um, yeah, I just like had no ambition to do anything. And then, uh, yeah, I just had no idea what I was doing. Are you on medication? No, nah. no. Nah. But there, there was like, uh, I think in 2020, actually, like I did get prescribed with some medication, but like, I just never persist with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, so, um, so in that whole break, what have you done? You just been kind of. You yeah, feel so, better now? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I feel way better. Yeah, so like the start of 2021 came around and yeah, I just like pretty much just like went ghost, I guess. Like I just like, I didn't like cut people off, but I just like stopped, I just stopped talking to people. Like, you need to worry about yourself. Yeah, and I was just like, you know, I felt like I was sort of starting to just even like, I don't know, like I just didn't ever want to do anything with anybody and like I was just like, I don't even want to be like hit up to do anything. Like I just want to be like totally like alone. No, like just, you know, nothing. Just like, I don't know. What do you do it's when you're alone? Uh, well at the start of 2021, well, I had a car, like I just bought a car. Do you have a car now? No, nah, I'm using my mum's car, dude. I got, I got no car now. What happened to your car? Well, I had this car and, um, it was fucked. Like I bought it for two grand. And, but I had a car though, so like I at least could like drive around and like I was just going to like, I was just driving, dude. Yeah. Just pretty much living in that thing. I was just like never got out of the car, just driving around, just going to like, like I totally forgot about scootering, videos, everything. Like even all the time I wasn't making vids, like when I just wasn't making vids, like I was still thinking about it. It still like consumed yeah. like my whole mind, but I just let everything go. I was like, fuck it. I don't know what I'm going to do. Didn't I like fully thought I was like just gonna never do any of that shit again, and then um, yeah, just chilling on my own, just going to like beaches. What? Just go there with some hot chips and sit on the beach, or yeah, yeah, pretty much just walk around. Like I don't know, like walking, dude. Like just wake rainforests, up bushwalks. What? What? What's your favorite rainforest? Like what are you? I don't know the names of Come them. On, I just, bro. I just you've see... been to Wentworth Falls. Nah, dude. You're talking about rainforests around the area. Yeah, maybe I'm just talking about, like, just big bushes. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I just walked, dude. I don't know. I was just, just fucking, I don't know. I was just spending time just, like, by myself, like, And did you chilling. did you find that, like, like, with your mental health stuff, did that help just, like, getting to know yourself? Yeah, like, I just feel like I had no space left in my mind to, like, think, like, I can't even really describe it, but like over like the time I just wasn't doing anything and like not like communicating with anybody. Like I just feel like I just cleared shit out and like, um, and like I gave it so much time that like I was able to like view everything now with a different perspective, which was like so important. Like, like, see, I never gave myself a break because I thought like, how can I take a break? Like I can't stop, but it was so good to give myself like an actual proper break, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> Jack, you're yeah. a funny guy, mate. Yeah, I sort of I explained like a lot of this next part, like in the in the video that I like the first video back again, just like getting into scootering again. Yeah, just started getting. What's that video? So your channel's jacked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the and video's that, called what? Uh, I think it's uh, it's called Watch Out. Watch Out, yeah. yeah. And it's got the scooter bars. Yeah, it's with got the, the scooter bars riding down with the, the train kind tracks. With the kind of POV yeah. spot. Yeah, so I spoke a bit about that in that video, just about like, yeah, finding my way and coming back again. And like, I, I started scootering again, like the end of last year. Yeah. And um, yeah, still wasn't like, YouTube was on my mind, but like I was really waiting till like, I felt like I really wanted to do it. Because like, and, like, I was, like, even applying for jobs and shit. Like, I was, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was, like, totally... What job? Oh, dude, like, fucking... Just... I just wanted something, like, just low-key. Like, I don't know. I swear I was applying for, like... um, I don't know. Just shit I saw on, like, the 
job websites. Fuck, like, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah, like... Because you were, like, before, like, we wrapped this up, like... Yeah. You were making, like, can you can you say, like, in between uh, like the amount of money time? you were seeing? Like, like the biggest... Like, I, just, I, think, I think the biggest month was, like... Um, was towards the end of 2017. I think it was 15k in in, the, in a month, and like, I, yeah, I, think I thought so. you were making more than that, bro. Yeah, well, I mean, I wasn't capitalizing like on all the ways I could have been. Like, oh man, honestly, I think I, it was, was more was than a, that, bro. Was it? I don't know, man. I don't know. I think I've seen statements, bro. Really? <laughs> like maybe it was a bit more. I think I you're know. playing it down, bro. Dude, to be yeah. honest, no, there was definitely a bit of money, like. And, and then um, to then to know that and then to apply for a job, that's a pretty, like, serious Yeah, I know, thing. like, yeah, I don't know. I was just, like, because I just kept thinking, like, I don't need to do the YouTube. Why am I, like, trying to, like, tell myself that that's the end of all the YouTube? But, like, yeah, I'm glad none of those jobs got back to me, dude, <laughs> because, fuck, <laughs> might be at Coles pushing a few trolleys now, so. He's, he's jacked out right here, guys. He applied for Coles. Yeah. What's what's next for you, bro? Well, um, I'm glad I started making vids again. Like, I just... I, I'd been trying for, like, the past six months to make a vid. Like, it's not like I was randomly like, all right, I'll just start again. Like, I'd gone out with the camera, like, multiple times to try and make a video. And I just, like, couldn't do it. Like, I was getting so angry because, like, I was trying to just talk to the cat. I, I don't know. I just, just wasn't working. But yeah. then that day, it just all worked out. And there was a vid there done... I just put it up, but I don't like feel any like, like crazy type of way about it. It's just, I just put it out, whatever. I'm not thinking about it too much, but like I am focused on YouTube now. I'm just trying to find like my direction with the videos again, because I'm obviously not making like the same content that I have in the past. It's yeah. similar, but like different in its own way. As long as you're enjoying it and you're happy. Yeah. I'm just trying to like, yeah, just get back to why I made videos in the first place. Yeah, fuck Before yeah. the channel was ever monetized, I just did it because I loved it, so. Yeah. So, yeah. No, nah, that's sweet, bro. Thanks heaps for coming on, eh? That's all good. Do you have anything else that you want to touch on before you go? Um, Not that I can think of. It's your first podcast, man. Yeah, this is... I'm actually grateful that you come on. Yeah, no, it was sick. Thanks for thanks for having me on. It's cool. That's all right. It's a sick bro. setup you got going here. There's a lot of cameras, guys. You can't <laughs> see them, but there's cameras and lights and yeah, this is sick. So what's so your your YouTube's Jack and then D A Yeah, jacked out. D A U T H. Yeah, That's and your Instagram, name. what's that? Uh Jack underscore doubt. There yeah. we go. Can they so, find you anywhere else or you want to plug anything? Uh no, I think that's it. That's it. Guys, make sure you like is the camera looking at me. Make sure you like comment subscribe turn on post notifications that's another episode of uh talking shit um see you guys next episode